Landmark Guided Suprascapular Nerve Blockade. There are no relevant conflicts of interest. The suprascapular nerve derives from the superior trunk of the brachial plexus and typically receives motor and sensory fibres from the fifth and sixth cervical nerves, while the suprascapular nerve provides motor supply to both supraspinatus and infraspinatus. By Hilton's law, the nerve also provides some sensory supply to the capsule of the shoulder joint. The course of the nerve runs lateral beneath the trapezius and omohyoid muscles and enters the supraspinous fossa through the suprascapular notch below the transverse scapular ligament. Although the absolute indications are unclear, it has been used successfully in all of these conditions. All procedures have potential risks and complications. The most common risks for this procedure are pain and bruising at the injection site and a temporary increase in pain following the injection. More rare complications include the following. The equipment for this procedure is basic and requires an alcohol steret, a 5ml and 10ml syringe, a 21 gauge green needle, an 18 gauge pink spinal needle, 5 and 10 mils of 1% lidocaine, a 40 milligram vial of depimedrone, gauze and plaster. The following video demonstrates a suprascapular nerve block performed on the left shoulder. The patient is adequately exposed and seated comfortably in a chair. The clinician stands behind the patient and palpates the tip of the coracoid, the posterior border of the clavicle, the medial border of the acromion and the anterior border of the scapular spine. These landmarks are marked out prior to the procedure. The site of injection is marked approximately 1 to 2 cm medial to the acromial edge and 1 to 2 cm posterior to the posterior border of the clavicle. Care must be taken to ensure that the entry point is sufficiently posterior in order to achieve the correct trajectory of the needle. The skin is prepared with an alcohol wipe. 5 ml of 1% lidocaine is injected perpendicularly from the skin to the floor of the supraspinous fossa. An 18 gauge pink spinal needle is inserted into the supraspinous fossa, aiming perpendicularly until the bone at the base of the fossa is reached. The needle is then walked anterior medially until it passes off the bone into the suprascapular notch. The path is traced back until the needle is on bone again in the fossa. This marks the point for injection. The stylet is removed from the needle and the previously prepared 10 mil syringe comprising 40 milligrams of depimedrone and approximately 9 mils of 1% lidocaine is attached to the spinal needle. The steroid and local anaesthetic is then slowly injected. The needle and syringe are then removed. Dressing gauze is used to apply gentle pressure over the injection site before a plaster is applied. After the injection, the patient is advised to mobilise as pain allows and to avoid any strenuous activity for the next few days. They should keep the injection site clean and dry and remove the dressing or plaster after 24 hours.